This is a show that is hosted by Dark Side Phil, DSP. This guy has been doing it forever. I think he's on his 16th year of live streaming. Started in 2008. He's had quite a run, a lot of ups and downs. We're not going to be able to tackle the entire story today, obviously. But I wanted to start with this podcast that he's doing, this Level 1 podcast. And the podcast starts off kind of weird because he does like this Hail Hitler thing. (laughs) So he's 8-bitted out in front of the video motion thing that's going on. And he he does this. Which is yeah. odd because the guy was literally kicked off of Twitch for saying things that were derogatory about Jews. Well, but it's not, well, then it's <laughs> it's not that odd. Well, because I mean, he, he's trying to change his ways, but yeah, I guess that's on brand for him. <laughs> yeah. To the people do have that. spoken, Carl. Yeah, f- fair enough. So. What is your experience, Andy? I'll ask you with uh, Dark Side Phil. Are you familiar with this character? No, not at all. My experience with him was being bored to tears. Okay. And uh, Lucy, what do you know about Dark Side Phil? I know that you're pretty good with the Lol Calvers. Yeah. So I started watching his podcast, listening to his podcast, and I was like, this is the most boring thing that I've ever heard. I sure. did not realize that it was DSP. Mm-hmm. And I, I finally figured it out because, like, Four months ago, Turkey Tom posted one of these like YouTube documentaries about him explaining how he's a lol cow, and I fell asleep during it because even his lol cowness is boring. Hmm. Yeah, he's definitely lost the viewership he once had. There was a time when he had a lot of people watching his channel, and he was doing very well. In 2010, he got laid off from his job and just became a full-time streamer and was making money doing that. And now he's doing the thing that pisses a lot of people off. And that's constantly begging for money. Yeah. (laughs) And that's really annoying to people. But I want to point out some things he does right at the get-go. I just checked out the most recent episode. I got a couple things here that I wanted to play for you. Because he starts out by talking about things that aren't going to happen, but they might. So I sped this up at 2x so that we could get through it once he gets into it. Basically, what he's saying is, because he's always talking about a schedule. On this show. It's nonstop. We got this coming up. We got that coming up. I'm going to be doing this thing, then that thing. And you can stick around for this thing and watch that thing. And so he's concerned about his internet going down. And rightfully so, because he wouldn't be able to keep up with that schedule. And here's the very good news. This is it. I, I will not be missing, hopefully, fingers crossed, knock on wood, arms and, and, and fingers and toes, you know, all curled together. Hopefully I won't be missing any more streams this month. And we should be into a full-on normal streaming schedule moving forward. <clears throat> As long as things don't go wrong. And what I mean by that is... I was notified this morning by my internet company that they are, this week, performing a long-term maintenance on the business of the internet that I have. And that even though they are not expecting any outages, they do have scheduled times when the internet will be down overnight. So, for example, last night, my wife and I were getting ready to go to sleep. We were actually turning on music. And we played in the living room for like 20 minutes before, you know, take a shower and go to sleep. And so we go to turn it on, and the whole thing freezes. We're like, huh? So we pick up our phones. Our phones are frozen. Guess what? The internet went down. And I looked it up, and it said that there was an outage in our area. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then this morning I received a notification officially from my internet company saying, yes, they are doing infrastructure upgrades this week, and they're planning on multiple nights where it will be down. Now you would think, well, that will affect my streams, right? You would hope so. Except I hate to say it. A lot of these times, these things are not very reliable. And you think, gee, you would hope they're not going to screw it up and, and goof something up and affect the stream. I hope not, because obviously I'd like to be here for all the days that I'm scheduled. Um, I'll let you guys know if anything goes wrong. If my internet clumps out during the stream and isn't seemingly come back, what I always do is I post up both on my X slash Twitter account, at the company SP, but I also post up on the main channel page of this channel on the community tab. Uh, my phone will still work. I have satellite, you know, the phone internet. So I should be able to still get connected to that. I'll let you guys know exactly what's going on. I'll be able to be a lot slower. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do streams from the phone or anything like that, but I'll let you know what's happening. So let's hope it doesn't interfere with the streams. So sorry for putting you through that. Yeah. But basically, that was twice the speed of what it actually was. He starts off his show it's explaining that the internet might go down, but probably not because the company said that it wouldn't. Wow. 16 years, you say? Yeah, yeah, I know. And this is how he starts off the show. Like, this is not compelling content, sir. No. Get into it. What are we talking about today? The cat is more compelling. Yeah, that was the best part. The cat was very tolerant of that whole soliloquy that just happened. Yeah, the cat's beaten down (laughs) at this point. Uh, Lucy, what'd you pick up on from this show? Well, so I heard a lot of the, you know, begging for money. I heard Mm -hmm. a lot of annoyances, but I checked out an episode where he was celebrating his birthday. Oh, yeah. He had his big birthday weekend. Yeah. And I guess that's a big deal to him. So he streamed for like the entire thing, (laughs) which is the saddest birthday that I could possibly imagine. I don't know. I bet he's pretty excited about it. He was very excited about it. So we're going to be checking out the conclusion of his celebration 
for which he is obviously going to need some cake or a brownie. So what a heck of a day. I think a little bit for everyone. Yo, know, gameplay, <clears throat> reacting, food vlogging. This is the finale. And what I'm going to do right now is have a brownie that my wife made. Um, but I don't think that the frosting solidified yet. <laughs> Basically, it's a it's a chocolate brownie with a peanut butter frosting and crushed nuts, crushed peanuts on top. And it, it looks good, smells great, but definitely the frosting is gooey. So not only is he complaining about people not giving him money, but he's complaining about the lovely brownie that his wife made Yeah, what him. the fuck? Yeah. I wanted to eat it now. It's not ready yeah. now. Where's, Where's the, the candle, problem? bitch? He, <laughs> yeah, right? He is really, really obsessed with the frosting not being to his liking. Um, but in clip two, we'll see that it's fine. Like, you can tell it needs to be in the fridge more to solidify more. <laughs> so it's fine. Because what happened is, of course, she frosted it when it was out of the fr the oven. So it's probably too warm to solidify yet and it just hasn't sat in the uh fridge long enough you think i'm a terror <laughs> so she's just off camera and she's like oh, oh geez I, I can't figure out if he's more mad at his wife or how time works like right he's just he hates everything yeah. so in, in clip three you know i just want him to shut up about the frosting already the frosting didn't solidify like i said oh, <laughs> It's fucking it amateur hour frosting. upstairs, I guess. Another birthday ruined. Yeah. You need times to harden. If it hardens, it's going to be perfect. I've had brownies just like this before. The brownie part tastes amazing. It's nice. It's moist, chocolatey. But definitely the peanut butter frosting needs more <laughs> time to cool. But it will. It's in the fridge right now. All right. She's already packed her <laughs> shit and gone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's, he does a lot of food a stuff. Fucking hot dog off the grill before it's ready. Like, you, yeah, you right. You gotta be in the fridge for a little while yeah. before you eat it. You're you're just eating shit before it's ready to be eaten, then complaining that it's not good enough. Yeah, what a dick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's pissed off because his wife didn't make the brownies until after they were done with dinner. Why didn't you make the brownies before dinner? I well, have to eat this on my show. This is a show about video games, right? This is a show about video games. About but he, internet connections and brownies. He tries to do a lot of different things. He's constantly throwing shit at the wall to see what will stick. Yeah. So since you played that, I'll play you this. He recently, this is from three days ago, was enjoying some Korean barbecue. And I uh, wanted to share that with us. And it's not even mukbang. It's like a food review thing. To start, I'm going to try the spicy barbecue pork up here. It looks like Look shit. Look at that. It looks terrible. Look at that piece. It looks like very cheap food. Looks good. Yeah. No. It's eating with a plastic fork. Yeah. It looks like a fish lure. Mmm. Very tender. Wait for it. It has <laughs> both a savoriness and a, and a sweetness to it. Uh -huh. But now the spice hits. Ooh. Oh, whoa. Wasn't ready for that. Whoa. Now the spice is after the fact. This and is not content. I'm sorry. No, this is dinner. This is not you eating shitty takeout food yeah. is never content for anyone. Oh, the pork is delicious. Great. Gives a fuck. But I want to know, why is he wearing the shirt that he's wearing in the episode that I watched, the most recent episode? Because as somebody pointed out in their subreddit, the buttons are on the right side, but the sizes must come in women's sizes. Because this does not look like a shirt that a, a man would wear. But he explains it. Uh, that's actually the particularly why I'm dressed how I'm dressed. Even though it is going to be a little warmer today uh, with partial sun outside. I'm wearing shorts and this nice new tropical style shirt. Because when I play multiplayer games, typically I get like my adrenaline pumping when I'm playing them. And it heats me up and I'm like, you know what? Today I'd rather be cool. For multiplayer, so that's why I'm actually wearing this. Um, what a loser. <laughs> you, ever, you ever pick out your outfit based on what kind of video game you're going to be playing that day? It's, well, we got Pac-Man four-player today. So. I feel bad enough just playing video games and wasting time doing it, <laughs> let alone yeah, explaining. getting all pumped up and sweaty. Oh, oh God. Get the fuck I out. I played uh, Red Dead Redemption today. That's why I'm wearing this cowboy hat. <laughs> Nobody cares. Andy, anything that you picked up on that you want to play from this show? In my clip one, I guess Star Wars Battlefront had come out unexpectedly, and he's going to put you in the experience of Star Wars. He's going; it's going to be like a Skywalker Ranch, Industrial Light and Magic, blow your mind description of what this game was like when it came out. 
basically, um, it was really, uh, really well, uh, like, like, uh, let me put it this way. It was dropped on everyone without real buildup, but when it did drop, it was a few weeks ago when it was announced, right? Like a month ago, everyone was like, oh my God, so excited. Compelling stuff. So one of the issues, uh, the reason why th this guy has so many detractors in the world, and uh, it's a very active subreddit, I'll tell you. One of the reasons is that he's not good at video games. So when he plays video games, he plays them poorly. And he's not good at analyzing and reviewing them either. Like all people who are into video games are like, this guy's an idiot. Doesn't know what he's talking about. There's actually a series of videos called, this is how you don't play. And this guy made this video showing Dark Side Phil playing a video game very poorly and made fun of him. It's like, this is how you don't play this game. And it caught on so much that he created an entire series around it. And it's got hundreds of thousands of uh, subscribers. What just a people, great idea. Yeah, just people goofing on how he sucks at, at video games. But that's good. I want to focus on his podcasting because that's what I do. That's my area of expertise. And I will tell you, when I'm starting off a show, you want to be high energy. You want to be having fun. You know, unless it's a serious topic. There's no serious topics on this show, except for me getting arrested, which we'll get into. <laughs> but there's no serious topics. So you want to make sure people are having fun and you don't want to remind them of everything that's weighing on them and all the problems they have in the world. With all of that being said, I hope that you are all in a good mood and ready to chill with me here on DSP Gaming today. And if not, if something's bugging you, if you're under the weather, if you're bothered mentally by something, hopefully this show will put a smile back on your face and or entertain you or distract you in some way from the bad stuff and hopefully get you back on track. If it doesn't, well, I tried. Could you imagine reminding people? Like, I realize that, like, work is hard. You have a family member who's sick. And, you know, there's, there's a death recently in your family. That was pretty brutal, right? Also, that girl broke up with you. You'll never talk to her again. But, hey, we're having fun today, guys. Let's enjoy it. Let's jump on the... And don't remind people of this shit. Don't bring it up. It's a bad idea. That just means that he's thinking about that shit. Yes. His life is crushing him. Yeah. He filed for bankruptcy in 2020. And uh, that's why he's this e-beggar now, because he's literally, and look at, we've all seen the e-beggars of the world out there. We've all seen the uh, steel toes and things. And it's like, oh, it's kind of embarrassing. But when he's on there going, guys, I need to pay my electric bill tomorrow. Whoa. <laughs> You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Listen, funny. Mr. Beggar, when someone gives you a brownie, just fucking eat it. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. The guy gets a fucking brownie and he's mad about the frosting. It's like, dude, you can't pay your electric bill. You should, your priorities are all on a whack. sell that brownie. <laughs> yeah. So this guy also is delusional. Like I said, he started like in 2008. He claims that he invented YouTube shorts and TikTok. Oh. He claims that he invented game reviews and playthroughs. He thinks he was the first one to ever play a video game on the internet and then people would watch him play a video game on the internet. It's hilarious. He's nuts. It's like, uh, what's his name's dad from uh, Stern uh, inventing the... Oh, the yeah, pizza. Sal, Sal <laughs> yeah. Garinelli's dad invented <laughs> toppings on pizza. Right. <laughs> he claims. It's like, I was the first person to put not just cheese, but other shit, too, on a yeah. pizza. <laughs> I doubt it. He invented <laughs> the question mark. <laughs> Probably not. So this is uh, some fun stuff. There's a bunch of YouTube channels devoted to this guy. One of them is called DSP Tries It Mammology 101. And I guess, you know, that uh, recent Dan Snyder Doc came out. It's not really Dan Snyder, but Nickelodeon specifically. Quiet on set. I yep. think it's gone. And so people have been sending him videos about that nonstop. And he's not understanding why that is. So this is him addressing, like, guys, I'm into video games. I don't care about salute your shorts. Like, he's trying to explain. He doesn't understand why this is happening to him. And right now, one of the big talks is that there's a show on Netflix, I think it is. I don't actually know what it's on. Um, no, I actually, it's on Max, correct? It's on Max. And it's a documentary about how, sadly, it seems like a lot of the kids were mistreated or put into really uncomfortable adult situations they should not have been in while on these sitcoms. And it's all being exposed now years and years later, okay? So we already watched a, a, a video about this a week or two ago. And I told everyone, I'm not interested in it. You know, I wasn't around for that era. I don't know any of these kids. I don't know anything about it. It's sad that it happened. Sadly, this is something that commonly probably happens in Hollywood all the time. And now it's good that it's coming to light, but I just don't care about it because I'm not interested. I, I have no involvement in it. I don't even know anything about it. Someone submitted an ultra clip this week. Oh, here's Dan Schneider's apology for the, the I don't care. 
I literally don't care. It has nothing to do with me. I have nothing to add or comment because I'm not involved in it. I don't even know anything about it. So why you would submit this video, I have no idea. We're going to watch it for like a minute and then I'm going to move on. Because I already said I'm not interested in the idea. I don't know anything about it. But then you submit it as an ultra thing. It's like, oh, we'll watch the video anyway. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Here it is. Okay. So that he puts out this video. You heard that whole buildup where he's going, you guys keep submitting this shit. We, I already looked at it. I don't care. I don't know what kind of take am I going to have on this stuff. I don't know anything about it. And then we find out the reason why people are all submitting this to him. Hey, it's Boogie. I play T-Bow on Nickelodeon's iCarly. I got a chance to watch the Quiet On Set program, and I reached out to Dan to see if it was something that he'd be willing to discuss. I'm okay. I'm okay. So yeah. it turns out Dark Side Phil and Dan look identical. <laughs> so um, everyone's I, just calling him a pedophile. Yeah. And he's not in on the joke. He's just like, guys, you keep sending me this shit. I didn't watch those shows. I don't get it. What's the. I'm what's not the on deal? trial here. <laughs> yeah, so listen to Phil get very upset about this. Really appreciate you reaching out and giving me the opportunity to talk to you about the, what we saw over the last two nights. No. Okay. That's enough. Like, really, I don't, I don't, I don't know anything else about it. I'm not gonna watch the show. I don't care about the show. I have no interest in the show. I was an adult when those children shows were on. I don't need to know anything else about this. Let's move on. Please don't submit more videos about this. <laughs> All right, you hear that, everyone? No more videos. He's such a salty little bitch. I know. He really stop. is. Yeah. In, in Dan's defense, at least he doesn't have a whiny voice like Phil. Yeah. <laughs> he sounds like I think Christian pointed out in the chat here. He sounds like Ben Shapiro. If ben Shapiro played uh, video games. Let's not of... start making fun of people's voices. Okay. Yeah, right. That's a good point, Andy. <laughs> a, I'm sorry, man. Us in glass houses yeah, over here. Should be voice phobic. <laughs> that's that's a very good point. Um, all right, Lucy, what else did you uh, pick up on from this show? Well, you mentioned that he was eating his barbecue beef, whatever the fuck it was, yeah, it was with pork. a fork. It was pork. pork. Pay all, right. all right. I wasn't, you know, I got <laughs> I got distracted by the cat and all the other excitement. I understand. Um, so um, while he's having his brownie on his birthday, the chat notices that he's eating his birthday treat on a paper plate. Um, so his response to that is that he's just going to be insulting everybody in clip five. All right. Of a cake. With the crunchiness. Yeah, what's what's wrong with paper plates? Anyone want to elaborate on that? Since now I see multiple people saying that in chat because you're idiots. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not like my wife didn't just completely make this from scratch in the kitchen. Had to wash a ton of dishes oh, no. because she did it. Right? And maybe I want to avoid having her have to to actually like, like wash dishes because we don't have a, a working dishwasher that's been broken for years. Oh, jeez. It's <laughs> been broken for years. Yeah. Well, he can't pay the electric bill either, so it wouldn't matter even if it wasn't broken. Wow, Good yeah. Boy. That's like centering John with the broken oven but level I, right there. I just hate him talking about this paper plate because he is the hero of everything. Like, he needs to be... He's doing that whole John thing where he's yeah. like, well, you guys are just insulting my paper plate, but I'm doing it because I'm such a nice, wonderful doing it for guy. His, for his wife, who was just yelling at for making a shitty brownie a Maybe second ago. Maybe if you thought it through... Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, this guy's handling this very inappropriately yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, so, this, this, this is why you're lonely wants. dude yes <laughs> yeah in clip six he's gonna belabor the plate thing a little bit more you know do a nice thing <laughs> just use a paper plate and throw it out you don't have to wash it oh no but you know paper plates on your birthday right that's a big deal you're an idiot <laughs> of all the things in life to be worrying about you're worrying about paper plates you're, i mean no brain right yeah, eat your shitty frosting. <laughs> he's like Chris <laughs> Chan. Like, he still reacts the same way yeah. after all of these years of never learning anything. It's like he does not learn how to respond to these people. He like, could team up with Patrick Michael and they'd be best friends for two days. Two days. Yeah. Yeah. They talk about video games and, then and some shit. And then the, the most trolls. acrimonious breakup ever. <laughs> yeah, it's the trolls for a minute. I will say the one thing that I think is kind of nice is that both in the barbecue pork segment and in this brownie segment. He's eating on camera, but we're not getting the disgusting mukbang noises. Mm, okay. However, he does have another really bad podcasting habit. Um, in clip 11, we have a snort montage that was put together by Phil Shampoo on YouTube. Okay. <laughs>
can't take it anymore. Yeah. It's very percussive <laughs> the way that that works. Well, since you played that, no. someone found him. <laughs> someone, someone caught caught him letting out a juicy fart while playing video games recently. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Listen to this. Who are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even do that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever. All right, you guys ready for uh, the big reveal here on this guy? Sure. Because we're watching him, we're going, hey, what's he doing? He doesn't know what he's doing. He's not very good at this. Well, he used to be even worse. Because, and this is from Bill's YT YouTube channel. He put together a short little doc about uh, this guy. And there was one specific incident that he has not lived down. News today. This is Keemstar talking about. So this is, this is kind of a, a clip show here. But uh, Keemstar is talking about what happened with our boy, boy Darkside Phil. A stream on YouTube got a little uh, X-rated. Darkside Phil, a YouTuber with over 200,000 subscribers, was streaming on YouTube. And he had text on his stream saying the stream will be starting shortly. Please stand by. But here's the problem. Phil didn't realize that his camera was on. And well, and he, um, yeah. well, he, um, uh, he, mm. He was oh. jerking off on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. So apparently he addressed this when it happened. It was embarrassing and everything. But then he came back and tried to change the narrative when he addressed it again. He became the hero of that story. Too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Check this out. You know, you can fast forward again to 2016 and the incident. Oh, no. Splurge. Splurge. Uh, where basically because of a very stupid thing that I did on a stream, the people tried to, to basically say that Phil should be banned from the internet and shit like that. So... <laughs> <laughs> what, what we're watching right here is him addressing it early on, but then in the corner, he's watching himself address this, and he's going to address him addressing this. He says he doesn't want drama. And change the story. I know. He's great, isn't he? I masturbated in front of thousands of children. Um, I'm sorry. I, like, what do you want me to tell you? It didn't happen. It did. It did happen. All right. It's so ladies and gentlemen, he's right, playing Red Dead. Dead. <laughs> this is going to be a bombshell. This Revelation, all right, is going to rock the internet. What I'm about to tell you has never at all been revealed, but it is the truth of the matter that none of you expected me to reveal today. All right? You ready for this? I hope you're ready. We don't have enough people on the stream for me to reveal this right now. We should have had a thousand. We only have about seven. So, are you ready for this? The revelation you've all been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen. I staged the whole thing. It was a bit. Please. It was one of those bits. It was like, I didn't even know I was on there. And I, I'm just jerking off on YouTube. But joke's on you. I did that on purpose. <laughs> Does he look impressive while he's jerking off? I feel like that might... Uh... His old, his old face was... It looked like he was asleep. Yeah, I, I was not. I was not impressed. <laughs> Although, in he his defense, bored. rarely do I see a guy jerking off and I'm impressed by it. <laughs> yeah. so, oh, that's a good technique. Kind of a weird question, I see now I think about it, Lucy. Were you impressed? You saw some of it I'm, just I'm now. I'm glad that you all answered it so legitimately. Yeah, well, I mean, some guys, I guess. Uh, what else did you pick up on from this show? Uh, he, and Lucy, I'm going back to you because I know Andy has a couple clips. Yeah. He, but if you want to jump in anytime, just let me know. Well, I guess in uh, my clip two, some chatter tips him $2 to talk about this first person shooter uh -huh. that I've never heard of, but everybody, you know, is complaining that the transfer from console to Steam and streaming mm -hmm. wasn't as good. Sure. And this guy is going, it reminded me of somebody. And uh, I, I'm going to point that out at the end of the clip. I mean, it's it's so atrociously badly un, unpolished and undone. You know, this is the kind of game that if they put months months more work into it, it'll probably be fine. But it doesn't play nearly as good as the original did. That's pathetic. Like I said, shooting through each other is pretty bad for a game that's supposed to be a competitive shooter. Uh, I don't know how they possibly possibly could have, have released it like that and, and not tested it and known that it was that bad. 
Boy, I really hope somebody got fired for that. One. <laughs> I saw that coming. But yeah, it even sounds like that. It does. Guy. Yes. He really. Does. An- another complaint people have about him is that whenever he blames everything on everyone but himself. Sure. So he, he claims that the reason why people don't watch his videos anymore is because YouTube's algorithm and everyone's against him. And when he sucks at video games, he goes, well, the video game is poorly designed. Yeah. It has nothing to do with me sucking at video games. <laughs> just like, I mean, obviously I hit the guy and it went right through him. Yeah. So it's just a design flaw. Well, you want to talk about why people are bored to tears by this guy in my clip three. This was supposed to be, the episode I watched was supposed to be Fighting Friday, where he just plays Street Fighter and Tekken. And he's been playing these fighting games for like months on end, like eight months. Okay. And people are finally getting sick of it. So he, this was called like unscheduled hang show because he's just like, I just can't (laughs) play fighting anymore. They're yelling at me in the chat. But then he's going to go on to explain that he, he does this with everything. Oh, right. Yes. He he, he loses interest in things and moves out of something else. He beats it into the ground. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Eyes Darkness says, if your core audience doesn't like RPGs, what do they like? Number one, I don't think it's a it's a matter of they don't like RPGs. Okay? I don't. I don't think it's a matter of they don't like RPGs. It's a matter of they don't want too much of the same thing at once. Right? Just like, for example, it's not like they don't like fighting games. They just don't want nine to ten straight months of fighting games. You understand? Street Fighter VI, people actually enjoyed, but then Street Fighter VI for nine months followed by two months of Tekken 8 is too much. You need a break. <laughs> correct? Right? That's what I mean. Like, <laughs> it, it just said, if there was an RPG that was one major RPG, 80 hours, and I could play it for two months and beat it in two months, and it was the only RPG I was playing and I was bouncing it with other stuff, there wouldn't be an issue. The problem is, I have to do it again. I can't believe I have to do it again. You ready? This is the problem. They all came out within two months. And I was playing Baldur's Gate 3. So I'm playing <laughs> 100 RPGs at once. It's never going to work. It's never going to work that way. There has to, something has to give. So again, he's not getting it. He's putting out bad videos people don't care about. Yeah. And he's just like, well, I thought it was seven months of playing Tekken and then three months of Street Fighter, but apparently it was six and four. So I figured it out now, guys. <laughs> but you're the one picking it, mixing some Dr. Mario for fuck's sake. <laughs> Who well, cares? Yeah. Just, you well, don't have to be playing RPGs all the time, and I have no idea why anyone wouldn't want to watch that. Like esports, when they started with that top down, like swarming game, like. It's like watching an old lady play slots in a casino. Yeah. What's fun about that? <laughs> Nothing. I don't know who's watching that. But Nobody's for eight it. months straight, mix it up. Well, I'll tell you, he is mixing it up. In fact, his schedule is getting ridiculous. This podcast is basically him explaining what his streaming schedule is so that we can all write it down and be ready for it. What we're going to do is we're going to alternate this as a night stream. And we're going to start doing that tomorrow. So we'll talk about this in a second when we get to the schedule. But yeah, what I'm going to do is daytime streams will be alternated between Elden Ring and Helldivers 2 for now. Night streams will be alternated between Street Fighter 6, the second run of Alone in the Dark, oh, and the co-op with my wife. But also, Sunday nights, we're going to be doing the retro reacts of The Walking Dead Season 1. So we've got a lot of variety on the late streams. Just think about that. So Friday night is like Street Fighter. Saturday night is co-op with my wife. Sunday is Walking Dead. Quality Monday time. is Alone in the Dark. It's like really big variety right now on the late streams, which I think is a great thing. That's what we were missing for the longest time was the big variety. He always thinks he's figured it out. Yeah. The problem is, is that none of this is good. You're doing too much. Like figure out one thing you're good at. People enjoy and do that. Well, nobody enjoys any of it. No that? one's enjoying any of this shit, which is why his numbers are way down. Did you have something you wanted to jump in with, Lucy? Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, so I was also listening to a recent episode. One of the problems that I have, and with this clip in particular that you just played, he just spends so much time talking about what he's going to do. Yeah. So in my clip 10, um, this is how he's introducing the topics for today's podcast. <clears throat> we got a fun podcast today talking about various different topics. Good stuff. Good stuff all around. It should be a solid day here to end the week. Um, and so where do we begin? How about we begin with yesterday's podcast when early on in the show. So today we're talking about what we talked about yesterday. <laughs> and then he just talks the entire time about what they talked about just yesterday. Recapping yesterday? And it's yesterday even, didn't say anything. It's not even recapping. Oh. He's like talking about new topics. I'm like, why was this not yesterday? So Saturday night is the big premiere that he has coming up with his wife. Saturday 
It's going to be Elden Ring, and on Saturday night, it's going to be the premiere of my wife and I doing an, a Beyond Two Souls co-op playthrough. Finally, after all the build-up and me talking about this for like a month, it's finally happening this coming Saturday night. So mark your calendars. If you're interested to see my wife and I do co-op in a narrative-based game, I hope you'll come back Saturday night and join us for our very special stream. So I know what you guys are all thinking. How does he find the time? To do all this, how is he able to play video games all day and all of this streaming and everything? Well, he made an important decision about a month ago. And I think he made the right decision. Um, It's been nuts. Again, I, I will just reiterate. I am so happy that I decided against doing a documentary about myself this year. I, I don't know when I would have done it. We're now in April, and I feel like things may finally start be starting to just get back to like in line and normal. And we're at the 9th of April. I was supposed to start filming for this documentary a month ago. I, I can't imagine how my life would have gone. I'm not even kidding. I think it might have been insanely disastrous for everything, for the channel. You know, already the channel was suffering from RPG overload, and now I was going to be juggling a documentary. Like, I think I really, really did the right choice there, thankfully. I just had the same conversation the other night with you, where I was just like, thank God I'm not filming my life yeah. and documenting this for everyone to see. Dude... There's docs about this guy already. No one wants him making his own one. No. We watch it all the time. Yes. Yeah. Right. We're no, watching it now. Nobody wants that. That's what don't it's going to look like. We don't care what you think about you. Yeah, yeah. we know what you think. Because you're wrong. That was actually yesterday and today's topic on the podcast that I listened to. The fact to. that he's yeah. not doing a documentary? The fact that he's not. And it's he changes the narrative in that also. Oh, he's, yeah. I heard he that, too. He starts out by being like, oh, yeah, it was my choice not to do it. And then mm -hmm. he's like, oh, well, the other guys that I was working with who also do documentaries about Lol Cows, they didn't want to do it anymore. And I'm like, pick a lane, dude. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's a compulsive liar. And he also has other things in common with stuttering John Melendez in that he can't talk real good. I played like 27, 28 minutes into a match and we were finishing it and the match crashed. That's stupid. You get nothing. You get nothing. It's like you get a, a cons consolary or a consolatory prize or consolation prize. You get like a, a few medals. Easy for you to say. <laughs> you nailed it. You got there, buddy. So one of the problems with this guy is that he thinks that the amount of effort he puts into something should be equivalent to the amount of money he gets from people for doing it. And so he says these types of things all the time. Now, he doesn't have just one YouTube channel. He has multiple YouTube channels. He's putting out... At last I saw, he's putting out six to eight videos a day, and videos are an hour plus. So that's all this guy is doing all the time. So he's not really trying to make quality content. He's just trying to make quantity content. Mm -hmm. And that's all he's doing. And he's explaining that he needs people giving him more money for this shit. I will say this. If you're watching the parts of that, that Retro React and you're enjoying it, please like the videos you're enjoying. Leave comments and let me know what you think. I want that feedback. And consider supporting whether a super thanks or maybe a tip on the channel or becoming a member only because that channel there's a ton of work going into it this just this week fallout 3 the new restored version now widescreen upscaled to hd 60 frames per second is going to start going live on that channel <laughs> and it's so much work going in but i'll be honest i i don't get that much support because i only stream once a week there and the videos don't bring in a lot of ad revenue they're not getting tons of views so it would be great if you like this playthrough, if you could support it in some way. Okay. Fuck you, dude. He's yeah. acting like he made the game. I know. You're yeah. playing a game. Guys. There's so much work goes into playing it's, a game. It's now widescreen. He's got a 1080. Outfit. Why He's aren't you giving me money for this? I don't understand. Like, how do you still not understand how life works? The end of his episode from yesterday. I just wanted to show this to you real quick. Let's hope for the best. Let's see. All right. Guys, it is multiplayer day. Thank you for chilling with me on the Level 1 podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show. So <laughs> it was, yeah, he's a, a bee and it says enjoy your spring for some reason. A bumblebee. <laughs> it's, look, it's a bumblebee. But what I wanted to point out is that this guy podcasted for an hour and a half. And look at how much money he made after an hour and a half on this. <laughs> he's got $39 of a $50 goal. <laughs> it's like, what are we doing no wonder you're filing for bankruptcy you're making 20 bucks an hour podcast or trying to do your podcast and streaming video games all day it's not working it's 
do what you love. You'll never work a day in your life. <laughs> is, that, is that how that works? <laughs> I'm not sure that's, that's true. That's why he's a bumblebee. Anything else that you want to uh, point out from the show, Lucy? I know you have some more clips in here. I, I did just really enjoy I had a little bonus clip uh, in there. It was just my favorite moment of the episodes that I checked out. Personally, I really like nuts. I think they're tasty. <laughs> that was all. Yeah. I just, I just needed to have I that in my life. I love to eat peanut butter. I love to eat honey. And uh, I also love to eat beans. All right, we're not doing a Jerry Banfield sign. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get people excited about that. Just reminded me of that type of mentality. So there's a lot more to unpack with this guy. I was going through the subreddit. Like I said, very active. People are very annoyed with this guy yeah. and the content that he puts out. And uh, they make fun of everything that he does. The eating food aspect is so gross. He's completely unlikable. He's completely, yes. And whenever we come across a character like this, I always think this is the guy I move away from in a bar. I've Correct. said it many yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah. But I always think like he would, um, if he's the only guy in a convenience store, he's going to hold the cashier hostage with yes. his opinions. Going back to that uh, Bill's TY channel, this is, uh, again, from that video I was watching to get some background information. So he was on Twitch for a while. So he was on YouTube. And then he left YouTube because he was being treated unfairly. He's got a lot of problems with YouTube. Went to Twitch and was trying to make money over there. And then he got kicked off Twitch. Specifically, Twitch terminated the agreement following its investigation of repeated instances of inappropriate conduct involving hateful slurs in violation of section 4.2.7 appropriate conduct agreement. What the fuck are you fucking talking about, you lame brain pieces of dumb fucking shit? <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't realize this. Apparently he was saying a lot of gamer words and a lot of crazy shit. I thought that was the norm on Twitch. Yeah. I'm surprised. I mean, I I'm the, he must have been taken it to another level or something, or they just wanted to get rid of him. Yeah. Because he's annoying. <laughs> he's annoying, yeah. Who are these podcasts? W-A-T-E. 